Hi, Jonathan Stewart here. Today I'm testing this new camera from Sigma called the DP2 Quattro. This is a Foveon sensor camera, and as you can tell from the styling, it's pretty much out there. And with a name like Quattro, you expect it to have a ski rack and drive somebody with a turtleneck sweater. Uh, but what sets this camera apart is the Foveon sensor, which is 29 megapixels. Uh, Sigma claims it has an equivalent resolution in CMOS of about 40 plus megapixels. And what a Foveon sensor does differently is you're reading your color information at every point in the, in the chip. Uh, this is opposed to a CMOS sensor where the color, sen the color pixels are interspersed throughout the chip so that if a, say, red photon hits a yellow uh, pixel, that red photon is lost information. So the cameras then have to interpolate that lost information and make basically what is a best guess of what you're looking at. So Sigma's Foveon sensor intends to do away with that interpolation and have every spot on the sensor read every color of light that comes in. Now Sigma sent a bunch of these out to different photographers around the United States and I think it's a gutsy move because let's face it, their previous DP cameras have been resounding failures and if they send a dud out to uh, 100 plus photographers in the United States and people come back and say, well, it's crap, then that move's gonna really backfire in Sigma. So let's give this camera an honest look and let's take a look at the images and let's decide if this camera is something for Sigma to be proud of or if it's basically just a thousand dollar piece of poo. So right off the bat, the first thing you do notice about the camera is the unusual shape. When I saw the pictures of this camera on Sigma's website, um, I thought it, it was fairly compact, but when I unboxed it, I discovered that it's actually pretty big in size. The problem with this camera, for me, is it's so long, and there's so little room here on this grip. R basically, there's only room for about the first joint of your thumb to hold onto it. And because of the shape of this camera, when you're holding it with one hand, it tends to pull that way and leverage is rotating that camera out of your hand. So it does require some force. You have to really grip this thing to keep it from moving. Holding it with two hands, of course, you, you eliminate that problem. But you can see here in the front, there's not a whole lot to grip onto either. So it's one joint of your thumb, the side of your finger, and then you're working your shutter up here. The screen itself has a 920,000 dot, three inch screen, so already it's behind the competition, which for the most part is, you know, a million, million and a half dot, three inch screen. I will say that it just barely is bright enough in outdoor full sun conditions. It works, it's not great, but it's okay. The lens is a fixed 30 millimeter f2.8 lens, so you're not really that fast at 30 millimeters and it has a teeny teeny front element. Can you see that front element? I mean it's just minuscule and as I turn the camera on you see it has a, a kind of like an interior lens cap in there that opens and closes. That's actually behind the front element. So looking at the menu you get a nice boot up. It's actually fairly fast to boot and handling of this camera is I will, I will give Sigma credit. Handling is pretty straightforward. I like the minimalist look. You've got two dials on top. You've got your aperture here. You've got your shutter speed here. And that's basically it. And your shutter's up here. Uh, focus is uh, manual or automatic, selectable by these buttons. And your menus are fairly standard. You've got your quick, your quick button where you can adjust your ISO, uh, your uh, metering mode, your drive mode, which I'll get into in a minute, white balance, your creative mode, I don't know why you'd ever play with that, your aspect ratio. Watch what happens. Now take a picture. One, two, three, four. About four seconds to preview. That's so we can go into our, our, our quick menu. We're going to select uh, multiple. We're going to select fast mode. We'll wait for it to get up to seven. Now watch this. So we're going to take seven pictures one after the other. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, now it just, there's no pictures available in the cache. We basically have to wait this whole time. There we go, we got one picture in the cache, two, three, so it's coming back. So basically for every picture you take, you're waiting probably 10 seconds for that to clear out of the cache. Now another thing that bothers me on this camera is the way it assumes that you're an idiot. So I want to have my shutter, or my aperture at 2.8, right? Now, 
let's imagine that I'm outside. Obviously this is not a good demonstration inside, but if I were in really bright conditions, I would want a shutter speed, say, more than 1 over uh, 1,250th of a second. So I move up to 1,600th of a second, and did you see what it just did? It just upped my aperture to f4. And if I'm at the maximum shutter speed of 1 2,000th, then I'm at f5.6. And if I lower my aperture down to f2.8, it takes care of the shutter speed and lowers that down for me. So Sigma is basically assuming that you're an idiot and uh, will change the parameters for you. Uh, I recommend, if you do end up buying this camera, I recommend an ND filter, obviously. All right, so let's take a look at image quality. Just go right away to the first shot that I took right out of the box with this camera. And it actually was one of the better shots that I got as far as the, taking a look at the technical capabilities of the camera. Look at the dirt on the lens cap. It's pretty darn good detail. We're at 1 100th, 5.6, and ISO 100. What I came to discover is you pretty much have to shoot like this in order to get any sort of usable photos with this camera. And let me show you why. Go right away here to a shot. Okay, here's a shot of some leaves and sticks shot at 160th, 1 160th, 5.6, ISO 400. Okay, uh, looks perfectly fine, right? Until you zoom in 100%, and we're noticing really not very good detail here as far as noise. We're, we're picking up a lot of noise, a lot of color noise, and just, uh, you know, very, very dull looking image. It's fine, right? But I just, I'm including this picture so you can see what's going on in the background. You got some green. We're getting some reds in here and greens on the on the uh, tree, but as we move up, here's oh we don't want that one just yet. Here's 1600. See we've pretty much lost all the reds. There's no more greens. The greens in the background are gone. Ridiculous noise and just pathetic. This is 1600. Okay, 6400. It's almost a black and white image. We're looking at something that could be from a newspaper from you know 1896. Horrible horrible image quality has to be ISO 100 or else basically it's not going to work. Uh, here's a, a shot I took of my daughter yesterday. ISO 400, things look just fine unless you zoom in. And we're noticing just, you know, look at that, just total loss of detail at ISO 400. Okay, this is like something from, you know, 1999, one of those one megapixel cameras that first came to market. Very, very poor image quality at anything over ISO 100. Uh, you can see from this picture, very, very, very small purple fringe with the lens like that. Really not that big a deal. I would think that that's something that could be really easily corrected. Um, I'm, I'm not going to criticize the lens. I think it's actually decent. Um, it, uh, you know, pretty good sharpness across the field and these chromatic aberrations are, are small and, you know, this is at wide open, only 2.8, but still wide open. I think the problem with this camera is the limitations that the Foveon sensor places. You have no flexibility, no light sensitivity, no low light sensitivity, and very low dynamic range. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you're used to using, let me reset this, if you're used to using a DSLR, you're used to being able to pull back details from overexposed areas and pull up details from underexposed areas. So let's just take a look here. Uh, if I were to bring down the exposure, say one stop, I'm still really not getting anything back. Now the overexposed areas, and to be fair, this is pretty darn overexposed, totally washed out. So I'm not recovering any of the overexposed areas. When, when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, the sensor is very unforgiving. Let me give you an example of bringing up some underexposed areas. Okay, let's find my favorite uh, little grasshoppers here. Okay, so here's a picture of a couple of grasshoppers. One is in the shade, the other is in the sun. The one in the sun is properly exposed. So let's bring up, oops, let's bring up the uh, shadows and a little bit of exposure to bring out some details from the guy in the shade. Okay, looks okay, right? Until we zoom in and we see that we've basically lost all the details. Just any kind of noise you can imagine looks awful. And maybe even a little bit of artifact in here. You know, it's just this god awful uh, dynamic range. So the camera is extremely unforgiving. You have to nail your exposure. Uh, you're not going to bring any details up, either under or overexposed. And I've also found that you really have to have soft light too, because even if you're properly exposing, if it's really bright light, you're going to get something like this, where you know this is properly exposed. However, 
you know, you've got these areas that are a little bit differentially lit. You know, we're getting a little bit of reflection off of these leaves and we're losing those details. You know, it looks, it's just, it's pathetic. You know, you're going to lose these details. You're going to, uh, you know, the pictures are going to look awful. Look at in here. There's, what, what can I do about that? You know, I can't bring that down. And even still, it's not that much detail in there. And that's, that's where I focused on, you know, I hit the focus. So what I found was that as long as you have nice, soft, even light, you know, not a whole lot of dynamic range going on in your photos, it will take a sharp picture. So the next picture I'm going to show is an example, I think, of the best that this camera is capable of doing. So here's a picture of my running buddy. I took it this morning. Uh, if we zoom in, let's go one to one. We don't want to scare people too much. Uh, we zoom in, I think, you know, it's pretty good. It's sharp, we're getting good details. Look at, you know, you can make out the hair around his ears, you can make out the sideburns, the five o'clock shadow. We can see that he might have might need to do a better job shading. Sorry about that, Jato. And this might be a good dental diagnostic tool. So this is the best we're gonna get with this sensor, but it is under ideal conditions, very little uh, dynamic range in the photo, so we don't have to recover, uh, you know, over or underexposed areas. And you have to have enough light still that you can use your ISO 100 because above that, forget about it. So that really is, if you can get those ideal conditions, you're gonna get some pictures that are gonna rival a full frame camera. It's gonna rival a, a $3,000 camera. The problem is those conditions are unusual and quite honestly, they're artificial. Yeah, I mean, here they are. I mean, we're getting some really nice detail in here. But once again, this is not a typical shooting condition. So this camera, I think, lacks the flexibility of a DSLR to get, uh, to get a real top quality image in various conditions. Uh, it lacks the ergonomics. It lacks the usability. So it's, it's a niche camera. If you're gonna be shooting in the clouds, in cloudy weather, maybe setting it up on a tripod, hey, for $1,000, knock yourself out. But I think for anybody, for anybody else, I, I gotta say Sigma, stick to making lenses. I'm sorry to say, but I think this camera is a failure. So yeah, my conclusion based on a number of factors is that Sigma, I love your lenses, stick to making those. Leave the cameras to people who dedicate themselves to electronics. Your optics are wonderful. This thing's a piece of crap.